Hey bucket listers, it's Trav Bell, the bucket list guy here, and here's a very quick, or I'll try and be quick as, uh, as quick as I can anyway, um, to explain what we're about to do here. We are, I'm off to Kokoda tomorrow morning with 10 other bucket listers as part of our bucket list journeys group, and um, what's really cool is we'll be finishing on uh, the day before Anzac Day. So the trip is, we go tomorrow morning, we go over to up from Australia over into Papua New Guinea, Port Moresby, fly to Kokoda and start the journey from Kokoda all the way back down to Port Moresby. Uh, to finish on the 24th of April, then we go to bed and then we get up for what's going to be, I think, one of the most uh, tear-jerking kind of moments in my life and that is uh, to go to dawn service um, at Papua New Guinea and Kokoda. So, um, what I thought I'd do is uh, we had huge popularity after after when when I ticked the Iron Man off off the bucket list um, some years ago. Uh, I did a somewhat of a, a very similar video, and uh, just in terms of the preparation that had to be done for Iron Man. Now, here we are again, um, preparation time for but for this time for. For Kokoda. So as you can see, we've got it all laid out. I'm just going to quickly go through what's involved, what we've got to carry, why is everything here, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, um, if you are going to cross Kokoda, walk Kokoda off your bucket list, then uh, this video just might help. Um, it's also serving as a reminder for the things that I might have forgotten as well. So let's hope. Hey, just quickly before I start, I watched this. I watched this documentary the other day, and uh, it's Kokoda, based on the book by Paul Ham. Unbelievable! I recommend this to everyone. Um, we'll put the link in the post here. But um, this is a this was a great uh, you know summary, I guess, of the Kokoda experience and and uh, and the war of Kokoda. So seeing that, going over there and experiencing what they experienced to us. Well, to a lot lesser degree, we're not carrying guns or anything, so and we're not going to be getting shot at by Japanese. But that's not the point. The point is to take in the history before you go over. Watch that. Watch that video. All right. So here we go. Our partner in crime is also the uh, Australian Kokoda Tours dot com as well. So you might want to check those guys out. And uh, and here we go. We're filming on the GoPro. So that is that is. Uh, that is one of the things that we're taking. Um, so, you know, I'll start with the GoPro. So we're filming on the GoPro here. And what we'll be taking in terms of capturing every moment is uh, the GoPro extendable handle here. So it's got the swiveling uh, GoPro case on it. And so what I'm planning on doing is obviously videoing a lot of, a lot of our travels. So. I can put this in front of people as they're crawling up hills um, and in a lot of pain and I can really capture it with a fisheye lens straight in their eyes. That won't piss them off, will it? Um, but anyway, I'm going to be capturing as much as I can So, because uh, we'll be going off the grid. Like the, the actual Kokoda trip in itself is for eight days. It's an eight-day trek by our standards anyway. Um, and so we'll be going totally off the grid and... So I want to film and also have as many batteries. So I've got some spare batteries over here for, for the GoPro. Um, and waterproof, waterproof casing, all the things that you've got to take with you on your adventures around the world being the bucket list guy. So what we've got, let's start off from the, um, from the ground up. You don't really want to see jocks, but uh, boots. Now these bad boys are probably a little bit too heavy for Kokoda, but uh, these Zambaland boots, Gore-Tex, and they are the, the, you know, one of the best boots that you can buy. These bad boys, we've been on a lot of adventures together. We've been to Mount Everest, Advanced Base Camp through Tibet together. We've also been to uh, Machu Picchu and done the Inca Trail together. So why not take them on a, on a more tropical walk this time? to Kokoda. So those boots are ace and uh, yeah, they've, they've done a lot of time. If they could tell a story, well, they'd say they've been to three countries. So um, they're really comfy, a little bit heavy. 
some people even do Kokoda in sneakers, so you know that's that's also an option. Or some of those sort of you know uh, trail lighter trail trekking kind of boots. Um, I've got some white some replacement laces, extremely important. And these are long laces too. Two pairs of those just in case they break. I know, smart, huh? Um, right, what do we got? We got some wool. Some wool walking socks, merino wool walking socks, and they are fresh as. I won't be doing that in a few days, but I'm going to take three pairs of those. I've just been advised that I don't need another pair, so they're going. And I'm just going to take, because I, I do get blisters, and I have got blisters, and I've actually got a walking blister. Look at that bad boy. Walking blister. <laughs> you get that on the GoPro. Um, got the blister. So these are just adult, like if, in case I have to double sock, that's what these lighter socks are for. And in terms of blisters, what do we got here? We got uh, some blister packs or band-aids that are like little um, gels that you can put over your blisters that hopefully um, don't allow you to uh, blister anymore or protect your current blisters. Uh, while we're over here, we've got um, malaria tablets. Now these are kind of freaky. I went on a boat trip, uh, you know, surfing boat trip for a month when I was 30 as part of the bucket list. And uh, malaria tablets, they, uh, in the tropics, I had the, these are Doxy 100s and you have one of these a day. Um, let's see your doctor or, or, you know, for your right prescription, of course. Um, but they give you, they give me nightmares. Like when I'm in the tropics, they give me nightmares and uh, like really hardcore nightmares. So I'm a bit scared to take these things, but they're an essential thing when you're in the tropics. So here we go, Nightmare City again. Um, yeah, that's a bad, anyway. I'm an asthmatic, <laughs> I'm an asthmatic as well. So I take an extra Ventolin spray, Panadol or uh, pain relief for whatever reason. What have we got? Um, Okay, we'll go over here. Um, we're, we're carrying, I, you've got the option with the group anyway to either take your own pack, which is this, and I'll go through that in a sec, take your own pack, carry your own pack to the, the tune of about 12 kilograms. Most of that is food. Um, we've got to, we've got to, we've got also got porters that, so we're, we're taking our, our clothing, really whatever you see here, your clothing, your daily snacks, um, most of the people on Kokoda um, have porters or, or a group that takes them and the, the, they take their, uh, or they cook, you know, brekkie, lunch and dinner. Um, that's what most of the tour companies do and that's what our tour company is doing. But we've got to carry the rest. So if we want to in, 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 eat in between or drink in between, obviously we've got to carry our own. Um, and uh, we've also got to we've also got to carry uh, toys and gifts for the for the natives over there, the kids um, in the villages. You know, there's not a lot of money going around, and and this is the only time that they get to see uh, westerners. So, you know, I've got them a hundred balloons. That's gonna <laughs> hopefully it doesn't end up in a creek, but. Uh, you know, there's going to be a whole lot of different toys that uh, I'm going to buy some more today, um, and give them, you know, give them t-shirts and and um, clothing and hats and all sorts of stuff, and um, you know, it's really like what's really cool is uh, you know I've heard from a lot of the other people that have been over there before, um, they just lap that stuff up and and it's so cool to be able to you know give that to people. Um, so there you go, that's a hundred balloons and they're light. So I don't want to buy them a toy that's got like a motor in it. That, that wouldn't be a good idea because I've got to carry the bloody thing. So that's what the balloons are for. Um, what else have we got? Uh, here we go. 40 flushable moist wipes. That could be my shower right there. Baby wipes. Um, of course, these got a little aloe vera, a little bit special. Um, but to to just make sure you feel somewhat clean during eight days of mud, grit, dirt, and sweat. So, hence those. A um, bit of body wash as well. And this is all, like I'm very conscious of, of when, I, when I do travel and when I do, do treks, 
Um, very conscious of making sure that everything's biodegradable. Like, uh, this is, yep, flushable. So they're, these are all biodegradable kind of items and I, I really like the fact that um, we're not impacting the environment, you know, wherever we're going. So, and I've advised all of the, the people on our trip to do somewhat of the same. Um, some hand sanitizer, I've just been advised that hand sanitizer is a good thing, that the toilets over there aren't the best. So uh, after you've gone, it's good to wash off some way. So that's that. Uh, now to get into Papua New Guinea these days too, you've also got to have a visa. You've got, so we've all just received our visas at the 23rd hour of going, which is literally the other, you know, like yesterday, the day before. So um, without showing you too much information, <laughs> there's the visa to get into the country. That's only new, um, the fact that you've got to have a travel visa. So um, that is, uh, that's an important um, new, uh, new thing that you've got to do when you go into Papua New Guinea now is to get that visa, um, whereas you didn't have to previously. We've got eight bags out here eight bags, eight days on the trek, all right? So what we're gonna have in each one of those, and I'm about to pack them up, but we're gonna have, um, we've got, what have we got here? A uh, cup of soup, a couple of bars. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna put a handful of nuts and what they call scroggin. Do you know what scroggin means? It's from, the, it's from, uh, it's a very Australian term. Um, it stands for Sultanas, Currants, o, Oats, or something like that. It's an acronym for what they put in bags like this. So a lot of bushwalkers in Australia know what scrogan is. I don't know the absolute definition, but we've got in here some almonds, good for protein, some currants, some little, uh, I won't eat them now because I'll need them later. Um, all sorts of different things, uh, pistachios, just to keep it, keep some different flavors in, not too much protein because it really dries you out, like especially in a thousand percent humidity or whatever it is over there, which is crazy humidity, the last thing you want to be doing is chewing down a whole lot of protein, which really, like, like, just imagine almonds, just that feeling, you want to, you want more carbohydrates, you want more salt especially over there um, and but you want to mix it up with a little bit of protein so that's what I'm going to be putting in each and couple that in with a tin of tuna I tend to eat quite a bit now this this is interesting when I was laying all this out last night this bag was was up to there no joke guys I ate that many lollies last night when I was laying this out. So I've totally stuffed up and that's exactly why you need to separate your food. Because if you're an idiot, idiot like me, where you eat all your food on day one, you're screwed. And, and out there, no one, I've heard no one really shares uh, their food. Everyone's, everyone's, you know, rationing it out. So don't leave it in all in one big container or one big bag because you'll eat it on day one or day two at least. So uh, I've got to go and buy some more today. I totally stuffed that up because I was making an example for you to learn. Yeah, whatever. Um, look, so that's going to be in each pack. Bang. There's my day of food. You put brekkie, lunch and dinner. Do you like the ad boots, by the way? Um, Bricky lunch and dinner. Uh, aside, this is the snacks. I mean, you can you just don't want too heavy snacks like these. These, funnily enough, chocolate. Uh, sorry, coconut and macadamia. They're a little bit heavier than these ones. So you just got to watch. Your food can get really heavy, especially like I said, a lot of protein can make it really heavy. Um, and making sure that you've got truckloads of water. So I've got, I don't know where it is, but I've got a, a camelback, you know, with a tube. I don't know where it is actually. That's a bit of a worry. Um, I'll find it later. But my camelback is uh, holds one and a half liters of water. Uh, hang on, two liters of water. And I'll always be having that, you know, with the, the hose dripping over, dripping over my shoulder so I can always take in water. Water 
and salt are the two things that you want to be consuming all the time. Um, okay, so uh, you've got over here yeah, two dunny rolls, some light light shoes. Now they aren't Crocs. Don't don't <laughs> get into me about. But they are the lightest of shoes. They're my painting shoes, obviously. And um, you wear those around camp. They're, they're heaven to get into after a day of being in those bad boys. Um, head torch. So here we go. Head torch to wear around the camp and extra batteries. That's, I've got to get. I've got to get some of those today. Now, if that runs out on day one or night one, I'm screwed. Uh, there's not a lot of power out there. This looks like a nightclub now. So, uh, I'll be putting my food into these separate dry bags, so um, or waterproof bags, and they simply collapse. You can squeeze all the air out of them, and then that becomes a really secure bag for you to put any of these items into. So I'll have a food bag, I'll have a, a dry gear bag, a wet gear bag, uh, making sure that all my sleeping uh, sleeping stuff is separated from everything else to make sure because we're doing river crossings over there like river crossings How he how big do the rivers get? Oh, yeah. about, about that big yeah, Shit. That wasn't in the brochure um, <laughs> <laughs> So we get some serious river crossings going and uh, so everything's pretty much everything's going to get wet um, what we got is a Is a fold out is a fold out uh, sleeping so we get given we get given a foam mattress, uh, but we've been advised, you know, one of these uh, inflatable, I won't pump it up because it will start expanding. Um, that is an inflatable body length size inflatable mattress. And that really works well on top of a, um, a, on top of a foam mattress, which is designed to protect this from the ground and give you that extra support. I don't really carry, I, I kind of use, um, you know, all the gear and my nighttime gear and stuff here as my pillow. I use my shoes as a pillow and wrap it, wrap it, wrap those up in a towel. Um, I don't really carry pillows, they carry up, they, they take a lot of space. Um, it, you can. Um, compressed uh, sleeping bag, obviously not too hot. Did you take a, did you take a mosquito net? No, because you're either in tent, you can take a mosquito net. Yeah. So you're either um, you're either in huts over there, and this is going to be the Anzac Day walk. So there's going to be a truckload of people, um, and so there's going to be you either stay in huts or you stay in tents. So I don't mind staying in tents. And if you want to, apparently, if you want to get away from it all, you want to be in a tent uh, rather than a crowded hut. So another option is if you're going to sleep in huts and you don't like tents. You might be claustrophobic or something like that. Take some earplugs as well. Jocks, you don't need to see those. Uh, night night gear. This is a uh, a thermal a thermal that's uh, again travel around the world with me. Um, a low alpine thermal, and it's just something that I wear um, around the camp because it's really hot during the day, but then it gets gets really uh, really cold at night time. And some thermal. Uh, Thermal pants as well. You can wear also under shorts. Um, what I'll be trekking in. What I'll be trekking in. Look at that. I like that one. This is actually called. Look at this. This is this hat's actually called the mullet. See that? And that's pretty much why I got it. So you can um, whack that on. And you look like you're back in the 80s again. Yeah, charging. So I'll take that off now. Um, it's a lot more suitable to when you're out in the tropics and uh, out in the bush. But the mullet hat, look out for that on the GoPro. Here's what I'll be walking in. Um, these bad boys and these are, these are uh, rip off shorts or zip off shorts. Again, these have traveled everywhere around the world with me. Um, and they just zip off. And I hardly even put those on when I when I walk, but uh, these are great walk shorts. Lots of pockets, which is what you need. Um, now, if they get wet or whatever, I've got the board shorts that dry quickly. Like these, the cool thing about, well, about these especially, is they dry really quickly and they're nice and loose. So you're going to watch, you know, when you're walking, especially up hills, 
the rubbing of your shorts can take a fair bit of hair and you know uh, you get blisters and little um, you know little rubbing sores all over your body especially from the backpacks and shorts and stuff like that so you want to be really mindful of that if not take some um, uh, some some uh, you know bass or something like that I was gonna say something else then that was just sus um, <laughs> there's now here we go look the this is an Australian tradition this is I've had this hat for I don't know how long and you may or may not have seen it in some of my other videos this is the good old Aussie terror toweling terror toweling hat that I don't I don't travel anywhere without I bought this up in Byron Bay about 10 years ago and it's traveled around the world with me I love it everyone hates it um, I think everyone's just jealous that they don't have one uh, best two bucks I ever spent but uh, you'll be seeing that in the GoPro video I just like wearing it as a bit of a tradition now um, under here under here I've got I've got a uh, what do we call these poncho <laughs> a poncho that's it Bunnings one <laughs> what's that a Bunnings one a Bunnings yes and I dad my dad I said my dad's coming along on this journey too and I can't wait um, you know the guy's 69 and he loves me being the bucket list guy because I've taken him to advanced base camp on Everest, Machu Picchu, and now Kokoda. So Tasmania. Yeah, and and Tasmania as well. So well, he took me to that one. Look, and so as a retired as a retired um, yeah, retired worker working the same job his whole life, I think he's pretty happy travelling around the world. He really hadn't travelled around the world because he's been working um, his whole life. He he hadn't travelled around the world until. Yeah, we started traveling together, um, which is really, really cool. He gave me this poncho. Dad's to blame. So, uh, so green. I'll probably disappear in the forest. But uh, I think this was like two bucks or free from Bunnings. So that, that because it rains, it rains a truckload up there. Um, but when it rains, it really rains. Um, we've got some Staminade. We've got that, we've got a, a lock for uh, our bags that we've got to keep at the hotel where we're staying in Port Moresby. Bit of uh, bit of going out gear there for the last night. Um, what else can I share with you? I think that's about it, guys. Other than, uh, other than the old pack here, which is a 75 litre pack, which isn't, it's actually lighter than the one that we've been given. And it's got a few more compartments. That's my pack. And, and what, what I really love about this pack is, and, and this is something that you really want to be mindful of, is how supportive and how, um, yeah, how supportive it is on your lower back. Now, I get, I got a bit of a duck's bum, so my butt, butt sort of sticks out. I got a little bit of lordosis, which is like an arch of my back. So... Although I do a, a fair bit of strengthening through yoga and weights and whatnot to try and strengthen my abs, and that's what I've been doing, um, and in particular your transverse abdominis, which is your, your deepest abs around your spine, getting those uh, in tune for a walk like this is very, very important because it takes the pressure off your lower back. But you want to support your lower back through having a good pack. So for me, I've got this Mountain Designs uh, Pangea 75 pack so lots of support there and you carry all the weight on your hips so a big a big hip support such as this is gold compared to a flimsy little little thing about this wide it spreads the weight nice and evenly um, onto your hips which is exactly where you want all the pressure of your pack to be all right and it sits up nice and tall so the weights distributed up as well as um, it's up and not just flat down. A lot, a lot of packs aren't as tall as this, they might be only about this tall and therefore you'll have a lot of weight, even more weight on your hips, all right, and uh, not distributed sort of the entirety of your back. So that's what you want if you want to have a smooth, a smooth walk, well, as smooth as you can walk. So guys, without, uh, without going on any more hopefully this has helped you because uh, if you're if you've got you know to walk the Kokoda Trail and this is number 61 on my 
bucket list. If you've got to walk to the, you walk the Kokoda Trail on your bucket list, hopefully this video has given you some insights into what you've got to prepare uh, for your walk. I mean, there's sites littered with all the different, um, you know, what, what to pack and that sort of thing. But here's a first-hand first -hand look at uh, what we're taking, what we've been advised to take. Oh, and the other thing, we've got a towel here, a little um, little towel, beanie, this is all nighttime gear. Um, yeah, hopefully this has given you some tips, guys. And um, look, I, I wish... I can't wait to get there, to be honest. I can't wait to um, experience what it's like on Anzac Day over there. And um, I wish you all the, all the best with your travels as well. Hopefully you can get, you know, code up maybe one day, uh, you know, crossed off your bucket list. So thanks for now, and I'll, I'll see you on the other side.